Rich Assembly Center. We're ready to play basketball. As you look at the starting lineups for the Rebels, it's Johnson and Young and Butler up front, 6'7 and 6'10. Anthony and Hunt in the backcourt, 6'2 and 6'1. LSU is starting O'Neill at center, 7'1. The other seven-footer, Roberts, will not start today. Boudreaux gets the call there with Sims. The backcourt, of course, includes Chris Jackson and a new youngster named Williamson that I think is going to be an outstanding basketball player before his career is done and I think probably helps make Jackson better. Now, the Dick Vitale, the keys for Las Vegas today are the E. Well, first of all, Johnson has to have the big game. Larry's got to dominate inside, especially with the loss of Stacey Augman key, and then they have to control Roberts and O'Neal. We will see Roberts off the bench. I believe he's sending a message to him about work ethic, that he really has to lose some weight, get in better condition. For Dale Brown's LSU Tigers? Well, for them to win, Jackson must score what I call a solid 25 I mean by that, not going five for 23 and then a host of points on a free throw line. He's got to shoot well. And then they have to minimize the turnovers because UNLV likes to score in transition, Keith, off their defense. And here's the look at Dale Brown, one of the masterful motivators in college basketball. The officials in today's ball game, as you see Dale's record, he's been here since 1972. They are out of the ACC. Richard Papero, Larry Rose, and Stan Root. They're out of the ACC, except Papero said to me, wait a minute, Dick, I represent the United States of America. <laughs> LSU is in the goal. Las Vegas is in the red, even though it is Super Bowl Sunday, just down the road in New Orleans. The basketball arena at LSU is full. Oh, forget about Elway in Montana. It's Jackson and Johnson. This is the real show, Keith, in the state of Louisiana. This is all the excitement. And the ball in the air goes backcourt, picked up by Jackson. I got a feeling he's going to turn it on today. It was quiet yesterday in LSU's win over Florida. 13 minutes without a shot. Williamson missing. The rebound is outside and picked off by Anderson Hunt for Las Vegas. Hunt gives it the scoring, the scoring they need from the perimeter. Anthony's normally their ball handler. Greg Anthony is the point guard for Las Vegas. It's been a spotty performance for him so far this year, but he's a man that can light it up too. The shot is missed inside by Butler, and here comes the Tigers. They'd like Jackson to really go a little bit one-on-one -on -one when they're in transition. Inside, looking for Shaquille O'Neal, and you got a tie. Ball, it'll go Las Vegas. The arrow pointing that way. And so the running Rebels, with that big 7-1, 17-year-old uh, freshman in the middle, come away with a draw in the, in the first effort to get the ball to it. Ball is stolen by Boudreaux. Well, roll, capitalizes on it. They love him here at the death goal. Good anticipation, stepped in the passing lane, and made a good steal. Anthony brings it up, looks inside at Butler. Hunt, very good outside. Butler is at the foul line, back to Anthony, inside to Big Larry, jumps in. And there comes O'Neal over. Anytime you put it directly in the lane like that, usually it's going to be a goaltending call. Jackson, for three. I'll tell you, Keith, I look at his eyes, and I think he really feels it today. Anthony tries to answer. Won't go down. Back iron. Rebounds outside. Barry Young, corner Johnson. A lot more excitement here than yesterday. Barry Johnson tips it in. That's a man. Johnson, Odessa Junior College Player of the Year. Oh, I like this. I feel the electricity already. Moving pick. Called on Williamson. You're not allowed to move. You have to be stationary in setting that screen. And there's a look at Park the Shark, Jerry Tartania. Maurice Williamson's first foul. Anthony sets it up for Las Vegas. Anderson hot open for three. Short. Got a good bounce, but it still won't go down. Rebound Johnson. Larry Johnson always blocking him out. Very active on the inside. No one laying a body on him to keep him away from the glass. Six points for Larry. Shot is forced. Won't go down. Ball loose. Picked up finally. 
by Las Vegas. That's what Vegas likes to do, run, baby, run. Johnson feeds it outside for Butler. There's O'Neal trying for the rebound. He has not, he's only 17 years old. He hasn't learned some of the basics of the game, like knocking people out of there, blocking out. He's got great hands, quickness, plus some talent. Williamson. He is starting to come alive for Reese Williamson. 7-6 for LSU as Butler travels and turns it over. You know, Keith, what's amazing, you're not, not going to see too many colleges in America when you see a matchup with more talent than what we're looking at on the floor here today. Here's the one one Jackson. Oh, what a screen. Anthony almost steals the ball as they try to trap Jackson. Boudreau pumps it up, won't go down. Moving on the rebound ahead to Anderson Hunt. Out of Detroit, Southwestern. Great explosiveness in transition. That's the nature of the Vegas winning attack. Yeah, and I think Barry Young runs the floor very well. He handled that pass very well, too, for Las Vegas. Oh, he's a real good shooter. There's a whistle and there's a foul. Vegas really trying to attack once the ball is thrown down to the inside. The philosophy of Dale Brown, what he's trying to get his players to do is Jerry is crying and moaning about the post foul. He really wants to stress in their half-court game inside, outside. He wants Jackson get it inside, they double up and kick it back out. There's the inside. Sims is blocked. Beautiful block. And the Rebels come out with it. That previous foul was on Anderson Hunt. Oh, excellent skip pass right over the top of the Good defense. Three for Hunt. Oh, what a pass by Young. Throwing the ball right over the top of the defense. Remember the days when the coach would break your arm for throwing a pass like that? Yeah, it's common now. What's worth passing to say was any good. Jackson pops it, won't go down. Getting one shot. LSU. Greg Anthony. Can't get the bounce. Rebound O'Neal. No doubt about whose rebound that was. 11-7 Las Vegas by four. Chris Jackson on the move against Anderson Hunt. Ball is blocked, the whistle and the foul. And it's on, I think, Butler. He created the foul there with the little head fake again. What a difficult chore trying to check. Trying to check. There's the backdoor cut. Now watch the rotation over defensively. And what a block by Larry Johnson. Did he adjust after he was beaten on a backdoor cut? Give Hunt the foul. His second, and Jackson will go to the line, shoot two. Jackson 90% on the foul line. The rest of the LSU team, another weak 55%. Well, when they lost that game to Georgia, and he scored 45 in the last seven minutes, Keith, they missed 10 one and ones in a row. And it was here. It was at home. We had some impressive wins, though. They had a real shootout with Texas, who's a very good team, and beat them 124-113. And Jackson had 51, and Shaquille O'Neal had a triple, double. 19 points, 16 rebounds, and 10 block shots. Two-point lead, the run-in rebel. Every evening, we pack 700,000 passengers onto our planes. No drinks are served, no meals are prepared. Yet our customers love our service, like our UPS Next Day Air letter. Guaranteed overnight delivery to any address coast to coast. And if prices far less than other companies charge, no one seems to mind that there's no in-flight movie. I love this game. I love to win. And I have, in college and in the pros. So I've had some experience celebrating. And you know, the way you celebrate says as much about you as the winning does. So do it right. Be responsible. Take care of yourself and your friends. No win to say win. A reminder from Budweiser. Announcing three ways Oldsmobile's owner satisfaction plan gives you a big edge. One, if you don't still love your new Olds after 30 days or 1,500 miles, we'll let you do something no one else does. Return it. Two, unlike some warranties, Olds covers just one part. This is the part. Three, Olds now offers roadside assistance at a very convenient time, around the clock. The Oldsmobile Edge. Extra satisfaction at no extra cost. This is the new
Why do Las Vegas leading by two? Eight of their 11 points have been scored in the paint, and here's why. Number four. I love the way he freezes the defensive player with that head fake, and he gets the goaltending call on Shaquille O'Neal. Now, on the other end, he plays both on the offensive end and defensive end. Here is Johnson with the great timing and the shot block. He's just a tremendous talent. If you talk about the top 10 players in the United States of America, you have to include the name Larry Johnson. Johnson has six of the eight points that have come out of the paint for Nevada Las Vegas. Well, he told me today, he said we all have to pick it up a notch playing without Stacey Augment, a great defensive player. Augment, in case you haven't heard, he, this is his day, a game to sit out under that uh, telephone business where that's an unpaid bill. That's outside, and it is good for three, and that makes it 14 to nine. Nevada, Las Vegas. Barry Young with the three-point shot. That's his specialty. Shoot the stand-up jump shot. Vegas known for their pressure defense. Rebels are now on a 12-4 run. Jackson has it knocked out of his hand. Good move by Greg Anthony. Greg Anthony, oh. what a great play that was. What an unbelievable play. A little too high for Johnson. And LSU comes up with a turnover. This is where he excels in the open court. Williamson. And Maurice can't get it, but Sims knocks it down. Sims is one of those role players. He's a wide body, and I know you like all those wide bodies. 6'7", 250. Looks like he can help Coach Archer's football team. Inside, Johnson. Oh, Count it. He is so quick inside. Not only is he strong, he's very quick. He's got eight points. Half of the Rebels total. 16 to 11. Rebels steal the ball. Two on one. Give it to Trailer. No, he goes right to the goal. Got ahead of Chris Jackson and just simply out of him. The play was triggered, however, defensively by Greg Anthony. Anthony has very, very quick hands. Seven point level lead. Anthony is really up to the challenge of playing Jackson. Sims. Too hard. It's a three-year starter. Has 50-foot range, but they want him to be a role player. Rebound. Johnson outside. Three-pointer. What can he do, Keith? What can he do? When you talk about picking one of the best forwards in America, how could anyone not include Larry Johnson? Dale Brown, trailing by 10 at 21 to 11, calls timeout. UNLV now on a 19 to 6 run to lead by 10. Finally, it's a minivan for kids with parents. And let's face it, we all have them. Yeah. The all new Oldsmobile silhouette. Talking radical concept here. Your own window seat. Room for lots of things. And neat stuff to keep your parents from bugging you on long trips. Besides, silhouette makes them look cool. Right. Yeah. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. Ready, dude? And they need all the help they can get. Yeah. This is the new generation of Unstoppable. Unstoppable. I feel really rotten. I have a uh, congestion in my nose. My eyes are burning. Today we'd like you to try Tylenol Cold. I didn't know Tylenol made a cold medication. Tylenol Cold has four powerful medicines to help relieve runny nose, congestion, hacking cough, and aching pain. I feel great. My symptoms are gone. I feel like Tylenol Cold did more than live up to its reputation. Tylenol Cold. Trust it because it's Tylenol. Use it because it works. Also a no drowsiness formula. George Foreman in 73. George Foreman now. A broadcast first. The Foreman Cooney Battle Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Keith, we, we take a look right here. Look at the left arm and how he holds off the defensive player. Larry Johnson trying to get post position. Watch him. Now we go here and watch the switch his arms and he holds them off, seals them, and now he releases and he's got inside position. That was a perfect 
post up for medium post play. In six Houston. minutes and 20 seconds, Johnson has 11 points, three rebounds, has blocked the shot, and has one steal. He did a great job posting. He has such ability. Maurice Williamson against Knott tries to peel him on a pick and does. Inside, uh, Roberts, who has just come into the ball game for LSU, shot is no good, and the Rebels won it again. Roberts is a baby. Bob Lanier. Hunt. In and out. And good high, solid rebound by Bernal Singleton for LSU. Out to Chris Jackson. It's short. Butler finally gets a hold of the ball. Roberts almost ran over him. Butler loses control of it, and it's knocked out of bounds by Nevada Las Vegas. Stanley Roberts at seven feet, replacing Shaquille O'Neal. No, he's still in there. O'Neal is still in. So now they've got the Twin Towers. And everybody thought the Twin Towers would make these people almost unbeatable, but it hasn't proven to be that way yet. Well, Keith, they're very young, and they still have a lot to learn about how to play post-defense and how to get position. But eventually, they're going to be the cornerstones along the baseline, and with this guy on the perimeter. Jackson off the baseline, won't go down. Shots not going down. It's uh, Las Vegas Pro. He really, when you watch him warm up today, you can look in his eyes, and he's really, really ready to play, Jackson. They left Hunt all alone in the corner. I mean, he had all day, and you just don't do that to Anderson Hunt. He'll kill you. Anderson Hunt's really been playing steady basketball for Jerry Tarkanian. He's really been pleased with his performance. Jackson's a spurt player. He'll get on a spurt. He'll get on fire. He's one out of five so far in the ball game from the field. 13-point UNLV lead. See, right now in your half-court setup, they like to go inside and then outside. See, the ball goes down inside and then outside. There it is. Inside, outside. Shot didn't go down. The rebound is inside, and there's a foul called on Larry Johnson. They didn't score on Jackson's jump shot, but that's exactly the way that Dale Brown has designed his half-court attack. We dump the ball inside to the big people. If they attack the big people, kick it back out. And there's Jackson, who normally would make that shot. And there's the good inside rebounding position. Quickness to the boards. Singleton, a very active player. Last year played the center position. He's having a tough time adjusting, trying to play in the wing. But it's interesting, isn't it, that you had the so-called Twin Towers. The two big kids were in there, and yet it was Singleton, a mere 6'7", and went and got the ball. Well, quickness to the ball. You know, last year their motto was, hard work pays off. This year their motto was, standing out in the crowd. And Dale really believes that they got a little bit passer, and they got in a situation where all the flattery can start believing it. And now they have to go back to really hard work again. Las Vegas not giving them any time to loaf back. They make them work back. At that time, LSU did get back defensively. Larry Johnson doesn't force any shots either. That quick little pass from Butler, Johnson didn't handle it. He wasn't quite on the money, and it's a turnover for UNLV. Larry Johnson was not aware that that pass was coming. That really should have been a made play. Greg Anthony. Bounce pass to the corner for Hunt's rainbow. What a rainbow, Jay. Come out of the Motor City of Detroit. Southwestern High School where Perry Watson has another dominant team led by Jalen Rose, a young man who's the son of Jimmy Warner. Anderson Hunt is now taking the scoring lead for Nevada Las Vegas. He has 13. See what they're doing? They're trapping Jackson to get the ball out of his hands. Maurice Williamson, he can't get it. Stanley Roberts has whistle for the foul. Stanley, the big fella, he has to develop a little bit better work habits in terms of conditioning. He's a very lovable young guy, but he has to realize as we look at the shooting percentage, that tells the story. 69% versus 25%, you're going to win a lot of games. In case you wonder about these two big people, 7 feet, 288 for Roberts, and O'Neal, 7-1, 286. I think this might be their best defense. They're rotating into the zone now. Two Moses, three matchup. Moses Curry checks in for UNLV, and Larry Johnson checks down for a bit of a rest. Curry's a guy that likes to chew on the glass. He's a Windex man. He'll get up on the glass. He's a good rebounder from out of New York City. Ball slapped away by Jackson. That's it to Jackson. Jackson gets the basket. Nice play by Maurice. I'm sure his dad, John, watching at home. He wishes you a speedy recovery. Coming back from an operation on the kidney. What a great player, Keith. You saw him play. Out of New Mexico State to the NBA. They put a net. See, I think this is their best defense. Two, three matchup until the big guys learn how to play post defense. Butler, Ramsey comes out. 
One of the things with that defense, it keeps the big people around the basket for good rebounding position. Chris Jackson forces it. Oh, oh, gee, that was awesome. Isaiah Thomas, eat your heart out. You could do that. Anderson run out of the corner. Oh, oh, oh. Almost. Oh, oh. Here goes. Oh, oh. We don't make the plane. We make it lighter. We don't make the lotion. We make it smoother. We don't make the dress. We make it brighter. We don't make the carpet. We make it tougher. At PASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. PASF, the spirit of innovation. Well, here comes the deal. Now, get $1,000 cash back or low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers and other models, too. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is a deal on a new generation. Oldsmobile. Mr. McDonald, let's talk chicken. <laughs> Are you aware that the public prefers the taste of Kentucky Nuggets to your chicken McNuggets by almost three to one? No, sir. And is your McChicken sandwich made with the Colonel's secret blend of 11 herbs and spices? No, sir. So how do you expect to sell chicken? Toys! Lots of toys! <laughs> Taste our best. $1.99 for the Colonel's chicken sandwich and fries or Kentucky Nuggets and fries. Denny Crum and Louisville are out to avenge last year's loss to Ohio State. Or Arkansas battles Texas on EBC's College Basketball next Sunday. 27-19. And uh, the play by Chris Jackson uh, so far, I guess, is the most dramatic play of the game. But I called it a, a force. Well, here it is right now. To most players, it would be a force, Keith, but he has such freedom and such a license to shoot the ball where Dale gives him that freedom, and he has the great hang time. You know, he averaged 31 points a game last year, finished second to Hank Gathers of Loyola, who's a scoring machine. This year, Bo Kimball's leading the nation, and this kid's averaging 27.9. I think by the end of the year, LSU is going to come alive. I really do. This is too much talent. To go back to the Jackson play, though, while everybody was applauding and roaring over it, the Rebels come down, Hunt hits three. Yeah, see, oh. Vegas really gets the ball up the court quickly. But his zone's got to be a little active, and it looks a little quicker. Sianovic is in. He Bice shoot is in. Bice is outside. It rolls around the top of the backboard, and it's out of bounds. Vice came in against Iowa. We had that game, and he broke the game open against the Hawkeyes, who have a big game tomorrow night with Illinois. Illinois hanging in. We'll have Illinois next week against Travis. the Hoosiers. Vice is 6'4", 152, a sophomore from Simi Valley, California. Larry Johnson comes back in, and Butler will put down. Stacey Sianovich is at a guard position. He is a veteran, a senior. Outside, Simpson for three. Just a matter of time when he's driving to the goal. It helps his range as a shooter because you got to respect the drive. They've been a better team since they rotated in the 2-3 zone. He's there to shoot the ball. That's his ball. That's why he's playing, and that's why he's on scholarship. I think he was standing on the line and got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> he played with Don McLean, uh, the outstanding hey. forward for UCLA. Oh, what a shot. You top that, John Elway. You top that, Joe Matata. Chris Jackson now with 15 points. An explosive 15. He was one for five at one time. <laughs> That's Moses Curry. Wow, he had a big hand in his face along the baseline. 
Billy came out of San Jacinto Junior College with his buddy David Butler. They were 68 and three in two years in Texas Junior College. They may need the third digit on the scoreboard. Oh, it's today. showtime. He says, "You can't handle me." He says, "Stacy, you can't oh. handle me." O'Neill causing the problem, and Johnson saves it. Johnson, Johnson grimacing like he may have hurt an ankle or a foot. He did a great job on his post defense. See, Johnson, they got to think of Johnson. He was dominating inside, but the zone has sort of negated him. He got to play a zone against him. He was going to eat their lunch. He scored 50. Ball tipped around, and finally picked up by LSU, and a walk. A walk on O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal doesn't know how good he can be. Dale Brown certainly knows how good he can be. He lifted his pivot foot, I thought, Keith. There he is now. Pick the ball up. Oh, yes, he changed pivot foots. He definitely lifted his pivot foot. Dick for power right on the floor. At 17 years of age, I couldn't even get to the post office. <laughs> Here's a kid out here in front of 15,000 screaming people. They say he was awesome against Texas when he blocked 10 shots. That's a ball. another walk by Greg Anthony. The zone defense has really it's done, it's done two things. One, the zone slows you down offensively. It really sort of takes away the running game and the quickness. It makes you have to make the extra pass. And the second thing, it's put them in better rebounding position, LSU. Well, especially with seven feet and seven one inside. Jackson shot won't go down. Good rebound by Moses Curry. Anthony in a hurry to Anderson Hunt, and they chase him out of the corner. They like to run the ball up the sideline from Anthony to Hunt, looking for the three. Too hard. Back iron, a rebound is outside to Chris Jackson. That's great control of his dribble at all times. Look, his head is off. Stanley Roberts, pull up the fifth. I thought he got pumped by that play as well. Stanley has the jump shot a la Bob Lanier, played at St. Bonaventure. When you're that big, it's not a bump, it's a ricochet. <laughs> O'Neill a rebound. Intercepted on the pass outside to Anthony. Inside Johnson, he scores it, got it, foul. That was an amazing move. Are you serious, Larry Johnson? I mean, that was an amazing move. He took the ball right in the face of the seven-footer Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Is the old Brown. He won. knew he was strong enough to do it. He's got great strength. This guy's Mr. Intensity on the sideline. He read a poem to me before the game that he was going to read to the team. I'll be honest with you, Keith. It was really a very touching poem. However, it was a little above my mentality, but that doesn't say much because my mentality is very low. I gave it to you. What did you think of it? I don't understand it either. <laughs> I understood it, but I don't know what place it had in, in, uh, in perspective of the moment, but that's beside the point. Well, he's a masterful motivator. He's always reaching for that next step. Look at that fast change of direction. Maurice Williamson for three. He's starting to find himself. High point. UNLV lead now at 35 to 30 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Williamson is a player that's learning how to play under control. And again, I can't emphasize enough, they've made their run with that 2-3 zone. See, the zone makes you make the extra pass. Four, Perry pass. Young, Johnson inside, Butler score it, and the big man goes down. Stanley Roberts rolling around, crack the lumber. Oh, very quick inside, but what, the, what a pass by Larry Johnson. Great vision. Jackson puts Anthony away and hits him. Little head fakes is get out of my way, Greg Anthony. I'm going to put 35 on the board today. Oh, that's a walk. Oh, I thought he definitely walked. Anthony's having nightmares thinking about checking Jackson. Vice won't get it. That's a foul on Larry Johnson. That's his second. I really love Larry Johnson. I think he's doing a game down in Vegas. He's always special. It's one of my favorite places with the pregame hype, the great enthusiasm and spirit of the Vegas fans. And are they spirited over that guy? It is Jerry Tarkanian. Stanley Roberts sits down. Sims comes back for LSU. Wayne Sims, 250. They don't give away a whole lot. They give away three inches. But no pounds to speak of. Williamson against Vice goes right by it. What a hand tag, what a play. Slap some high fives in the duck goal. Maurice Williamson hooking up with Jackson. What a difference in yesterday's game. Unbelievable against Florida. Three point ball game right now, and UNLV leading 37 34.
four. Right. Off the back iron. One shot against the zone. Uh-oh, look at that change of direction. Are you serious? Are you serious? I can't believe it. This is awesome, Keith. Hold me down, baby. Hold me down. One point ball game. to do this. Butler won't go. Rebound. LSU with a chance to pick the lead. They got a foul back here. They got a foul. Williamson went down and a foul whistled against Nevada Las Vegas. Jerry Tarkanian goes in some troubled times now with the NCAA rulings. There's the change of direction. Now is the trip. He trips him in the backcourt accidentally. Not Totally accidentally. No. <laughs> Greg Anthony the foul. They're laying some mean screens to get him free. Thank you. The Tigers I, have the lead. I don't want to say I said it, Keith, but on the top of the show, I told you I saw it in his eyes, Keith, while it was warming up. He was coming out here to be an assassin, and he is a silent assassin. 38-37, LSU. Larry Young, open, didn't take the shot. Goes instead to Larry Young, and Young is fouled by Sims. Larry Johnson was fouled. Johnson, I'm sorry. Johnson Barry fouled Johnson. on the play. Young was wide open, and Barry didn't take it. Yeah, Barry Young gave him the basketball, gave up the rock. You know. Hey, Maurice Williamson certainly has picked up his game a notch in the last three or four games. Where's that great reverse layup? Look at that move. Just like he did at Wilberforce High School in New Haven under Bob Salisbury, where he scored 40 points a game. Four minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half. 38-37, LSU leading for the first time in the ball game. They know in fairness to Vegas, they really miss a Stacey Orkman. A Stacey Orkman gives him not only a guy that can run the court with quickness, he can score, but he's a tremendous defensive player. This is the first one. You know, I mentioned earlier that Jerry Tarkanian really a little bit down about all the interruptions because it's not a one-game suspension, Keith. It really becomes almost like a month because it breaks up the rhythm of the team. I thought the penalty of the NCAA was too severe since it was just incidental charges that the kids totally repaid, and I thought the one game on each kid was too severe. Williamson from the corner for three. 38 LSU. Williamson's becoming contagious from Jackson. Butler inside, and he is hammered by Stanley Roberts. David Butler has NBA ability, a very quick player. Coming up at halftime, we've got a feature on Norm Stewart, the head coach of the top-ranked Missouri Tigers. Roger Twybell and Dick Vitale will take you to the Foot Locker Slam Fest. That's going to be running the rest of our basketball season here on ABC. I think you'll enjoy it. That was a lot of fun, Keith. These athletes are absolutely amazing. Neon Dion. He can get up. He's a high riser. Keith Jackson's in it. Your guy. You made Keith Jackson a superstar. He loves you. He does a great impersonation of you. <laughs> oh, Nelly. He did everything himself. Oh, Nelly. Jackson's on fire. Shaking and making it in Louisiana. Five point lead inside again. Butler is hammered. And again, it's Stanley Roberts. This is the most exciting first half that I've been part of, and I've done a lot of games this year, Keith, in terms of the tempo and the kind of play. It's like an NBA first half. Talent with a capital T. They gave it to Singleton, not Roberts. Both of them there. And it was a matter of take your choice. I was telling you this morning that Jerry Tarkanian getting back to how it's broken up the rhythm of the Vegas team, and I thought the penalty was too severe. I think because of all these interferences, my feeling, Jerry Tarkanian has turned down a lot of NBA jobs. I really believe that Jerry Tarkanian, with the right offer, will go to the NBA after this year. And I'll tell you this, he will be a great, a great NBA coach because he's a communicator, he really has great rapport with the players. 
I believe he's getting fed up with all the interference. 401 to go in the first half with a three-point lead for the home standing Bengal Tigers. What the LSU backcourt has done in the run to the lead. Jackson and Williamson have 36. Look at right here. LSU's 44 points. The Fliss meter, he's got 24. I'll tell you, Keith, we watched him yesterday in the second half. Kenny Wolf, our knowledgeable producer, former player for Harvard. I'll tell you one thing. We watched him yesterday, and in the second half, he didn't take a shot for about the first 16 minutes. It was like he was trying to appease his teammates. And Don DeVoe had an excellent game plan, was to basically run the clock down 35 seconds and then look at the basket. And it was a very slow-paced game, not like what we're seeing here. He was one out of uh, six, his first six shots, and then he hit seven out of eight. He's a great spurt shooter. Singleton out in front with Jackson right now. Sets the pick for him, but picked up nicely by Anderson Hunt. Inside, they've got the two. See, they should go inside. They should go inside. O'Neal takes his eye off the ball, and it goes off his leg out of bounds. Turnover, LSU. But it was a good look. You want to take yep. advantage of the big people in a half-court offense. Dump it inside and use them as the key inside-outside. There's the zone again. Two, three Look zones. how small David Butler looks in there against uh, O'Neal. He looks little. It's like I looked against Keith Jackson in that slam jam contest. <laughs> Barry Johnson. See, the zone makes them become a little passive. Notice how it takes time off the clock. Butler can't get it. Great rebound, Greg Anthony. Excellent play by Anthony. The little guard steps in. No way should he be able to rebound that long rebound like that with those trees inside. One point game now for LSU. Oh, they're playing a special defense now. Look at chasing Jackson all over the court. Williamson got Larry Johnson airborne and landed home. He is really starting to develop a lot of confidence in his game. Young out of the corner. Singleton nudges Jackson aside and rebounds it. Oh, what a pass. Robert, what a pass. What a finalizer. Keith, what a pass. And he finalizes it like the exclamation point. Boom, bam, boom. What a great look. Look at Jackson. His head is up at all times. And he drives the pass in. And look at this guy's strength. They have potential as a team. What they're missing is a leader. They have to have somebody come forward as a leader on the team. Jackson's a very passive young man. He's not a vocal kind of kid. He makes his presence known with his blood. Roberts misses and Butler rebounds. At two and a half minutes to go in the first half and a five-point LSU lead. Roberts loses about 25 pounds to be frightening. Shaquille O'Neal never got a hand up. Shaquille O'Neal never got a hand up. Very slow reacting. And Butler, who has a nice touch, shoots it. Now look at this. They're going to play Jackson man-to-man -man in zone. Anthony's going to chase him all over the place. Uh, first point of the game for Shaquille O'Neal. See what's happened, Keith. It's opened up other angles for other people by playing the man to man on Jackson in the zone with the other four people. Anthony for three. Anthony answers with a long tray. What a game for you people. What a game. Look at this, dude. Williamson for three. Air ball. Rebound O'Neill. Count it and foul. Hey, forget about Super Sunday. This is Sunday special right here. I can't believe what I'm looking at. I can't believe he couldn't eat last night. At dinner is a nervous wreck thinking about the frightening combination of these two big people. And there's O'Neill, San Antonio, Texas. Led his high school team 36 and zip. Their senior year at Cole High School. His second basket. Comes out of San Antonio where Larry Brown's got him really playing great basketball. David Robinson, certainly one of the the real blue chip players now in the NBA. Tip up, Robert. Danny Roberts with a left hand tip. I think he got a little lucky on that play. He will down. Johnson, block, rebound, block. Now Jones and James comes out with it. Anderson Hunt. Butler won't go. Rebound, LSU. Away we go. Away we go. He's doing a dance. He's doing a dance. Paparo says two. Jackson says no 
was a three. Oh, please. Six points for Jackson. We see one of the great performances this year in college basketball. Anthony. LSU ball. 56, 48, a minute to go, first half. The young, big people inside. Robertson O'Neill gaining confidence now with every passing second. I think what's really happened, Keith, by playing the zone and keeping them active on the inside, they're in great rebounding position. And this is a big game for LSU, and I'll tell you why right after that jumper. Jackson a little short. O'Neal puts it up. And O'Neal has really come alive. I think the Vegas kids are absolutely like looking at all. What's going on out here? I mean, they were winning easy, Keith. 24 to 11, Vegas. Yep. I can't believe Florida played this team down for the last four minutes. Barry Johnson, good pass. Barry Young. David Butler is fouled by Roberts, and Roberts has three personal fouls. That's been a major problem for Stanley and also for Shaquille all year long, getting into foul trouble. Stanley, unless he's going to lose some weight and get himself in great condition, Dale Brown's going to give him playing time. He'll be a member of my all playing team, a guy with a world of potential. Dale says he's got to learn the lesson. He's a lovable kid, but he's got to learn to get in better condition. Hey, Keith, I'll tell you why this is a big game. They came out with all the great expectations, and they haven't been able to post what I call the real magical win over a top club like Kansas beat them. They need this win today to make a believer and really make them develop a sense of confidence. Because I believe, personnel-wise, they're the class of the Southeastern Conference. There's a five-team tie for the lead in the SEC, and LSU's next game is over at Ole Miss. Is that going to run and gun here today? Will Las Vegas go to Ole Miss and play? Cheryl uh, Glass and company. He yep. can play. He's a big-time yep. player. They've been a little disappointed. In fact, the conference this year, I think anybody would agree, it's not really a vintage year because of what's happened at Florida. And I hate to see it. I hate to see coaches like Norm Sloan as we watch it. Oh, no, he deflected it. Singleton out in front. In the corner, Williamson short off the iron. The rebound goes Shaquille O'Neal. What a great half. Look at Dale Brown. He's got to be pleased. Look at the throw. He's got a Jackson point lead. That's why he's happy. Uh, also the way they play it. And there's a sad Jerry Tarkanian. LSU 58, Nevada, Las Vegas 49 at halftime. ABC's College Basketball, brought to you by the new generation. This team's number one ranking. Let's take a look at Missouri's head coach, Norm Stewart. Missouri's Norm Stewart should have a lot to smile about these days. On Monday, his Tigers were named the number one team in the nation. But all this week, Stewart hardly gave it a thought. In fact, if you listen to him, he'll tell you what a burden it is to be on top. I think, first of all, the players, if, if they work hard and they win the ball games and they get it, well, they deserve it, and they, they ought to enjoy that. On the other hand, I think if you look at it, uh, it's something that really nobody wants, but once they get it, you know, there's only one way that you basically get rid of this. Considering what Norm Stewart has been through in the last 12 months, it's a small miracle he can joke about being number one. Last February, Stewart collapsed while traveling on a team flight to Oklahoma. Five days later, he underwent surgery for colon cancer. While he was recovering, his wife of 33 years, Virginia, also underwent surgery. Stewart lost 30 pounds and still suffers from fatigue. But his brush with death has strengthened his love for life. It's made me like everything else a little more appreciative. Uh, I've always felt that I appreciated everything and uh, the fact that I really, we've, we've had a, a tremendous life to this point and hope that there's a lot more in front of us. But I think just much more appreciative, much more appreciative of coaching and the, the, the people that we have and that, that they play. Missouri's play has led to 19 victories and only one defeat. This year, Stewart's main problems are an NCAA in-house investigation into alleged recruiting violations. Last season, Missouri admitted to providing an airline ticket to a former player, a violation. This is the first time Stewart's been investigated, and he and his fans aren't sharing about it. We are now having, as you mentioned, a complete investigation, which is uh, a little 
that was a little surprising to me because we made the self-report. But again, everybody can question. Uh, hopefully, the mood of the times won't catch us up uh, in, in this and that everything will be judged on the, on the merits. And if it is, well, I feel very good about it. Storming Norman Stewart says his illness hasn't mellowed him out or made him less competitive, but he does admit the bad calls and the turnovers aren't going to keep him up all night. I think that uh, I'm grinning more. I really think I'm smiling a lot more now, uh, even when we're behind. leading 24 to 11 at one point of the first half. LSU went on a 47-25 tear to lead by nine at halftime. Well, coming up next now is a feature that you'll see the rest of the basketball season here on ABC Sports. They call it the Foot Locker Slam Fest. Roger Twible and Dick Vitale and some real big wide bodies. <laughs> Today, four stars from the National Football League will try to shine on the basketball court. Coming up, it's the opening round of the Foot Locker Slam Fest. Hi, everybody. Along with Dick Vitale, I'm Roger Twabo. Welcome to the third annual Foot Locker Slam Fest 16 non-NBA professional athletes, Dick, will throw it down for a $50,000 top prize. Roger, unbelievable. It'll be Slam Jam Bam, Dipsy Doo, Dunkaroo, Skywalkers. They're unbelievable. Come on down, Michael Jordan. There are some competitors here, baby. This field's comprised of 16 athletes, and this half of the draw ranges from a quarterback to an Olympic silver medalist. The other half features the defending champion, Mike Conley. First up, though, it's the sacker against the quarterback, Chris Dolman of the Minnesota Vikings and Randall Cunningham of the Philadelphia Eagles. And Dolman, 6'5 and 261. And Dick, he can get up in the air, but at 261, you come down in a hurry as he went with two balls that time. Roger, we got the power dunker against the finesse dunker. Dolman, a real powerful physical force. There he is taking two balls. Great timing. What agility and timing for the big fella. This was his second dunk. His first one scored 7-2. He led the NFL in sack with 21 a year ago. I'll tell you, move over Alan Page. This guy's the absolute superstar in Minnesota, and he's ecstatic with his 8.9. Wow, so Dolman with an 8.9, and that means that Randall Cunningham, who scored 7.5 in his first dunk, has to beat 8.9, and from UNLV, he's seen some good dunkers, Dick. I'll tell you, Roger, he was called the ultimate weapon by Sports Illustrated. Look at this finesse player with the reverse jam. Buddy Ryan, how do you like it, baby? Tell you one thing, when you look at this guy, you see a guy with great quickness. There he is taking it in reverse. Hey, Jerry Tarkady, get him in a running Rebels uniform. Dick, we got to tell everybody, though, those are not regulation men's basketballs. Those are women's basketballs, so they're a little smaller. 8.9, well, that's going to be hard to get. And it was hard to get for Randall Cunningham. He comes up short, and Chris Dolman advances. Now, up next, the defensive back against the wide receiver, Sanders against Carter. They both missed their first dunk, so Deion Sanders, Neon, Deion, primetime, and Dick, he is a show unto himself. He really is showtime. I really like his personality. Look at the explosiveness off the floor. Great hang time. A very explosive athlete. And how explosive was it? Well, as he goes up, we'll tell you that this guy plays not only for the Atlanta Falcons, but for the New York Yankees, and that's worth a few points. I'll tell you, you've got to be a great athlete to do that, Roger. Look at that great hang time. And he's got the great personality. He's absolutely scintillating to be around. 7.8, and that means Anthony Carter, who's a native of Riviera Beach, Florida, is coming in, and that's his slam. But is it enough? AC, you're in big trouble, baby. Call Shebnickler up for some help. 6.8, Deion Sanders beats Anthony Carter. Next week, long jumper Mike Powell versus the rookie of the year, Jerome Walton, and then a battle of the center fielders, Devon White and Ellis Burks. Ready to go with the second half, 58-49, LSU leading the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Dick Vitale, if you don't quit going to so many basketball games, you're going to look like that. I think I do look like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're being kind to me. Uh, Dick Vitale named the Sports Personality of the Year by the American Sportscasters Association, and now my football partner, Bob Greasy, bless his heart, has been moved to the NFL Hall of Fame. Robert, we're just a great football player, and now he's in the Hall of Fame where he should be. He was in with some great people, too. He was really Mr. Consistency when he played, no doubt about it. 
You saw the numbers there at halftime, and it was the big turnaround, a 13-point LSU uh, trailing, and then they just blitzed them by 22 points to lead by nine at halftime, and the Bayou Bengals have the ball to start the half, and they start out with a turnover. Well, Uncle Momentum, Mr. Moe, was certainly on the side of LSU going in at halftime, and they sustained the electricity they played with. It'll be interesting to see if they can. Anthony handles out in front with Anderson Hunt. Uh, inside, Moses Scurry is working, and out of the corner, Larry Johnson. They go inside to Scurry, and it won't go down. He's fouled. They did a nice job attacking the 2-3 zone. They stepped right into the gap of the zone, and they got right into that seam. The foul is on O'Neal. He has two personals now, and Stanley Roberts uh, has three. So the two big men uh, really in foul trouble as yet. Gary makes the first one. It's 58-50. Uh, Jerry Tarkanian has not had his team together early in the year. He lost David Butler academically, Moses Scurry academically, now the recent NCAA ruling, which as I said earlier, really is not a one-game suspension in basketball. That's like a month. We have to suspend. He has to put two players out of game in the next three games. Good play by Scurry, picked up by Hunt. Hunt goes to the corner. Larry Johnson gets it up in the air. It's air ball. And inside, paddling is Butler and a foul is whistled. That may have been a pass. Well, I'll tell you, he'll tell you it was a pass. I think he was thinking shot, but then at the last second decided to pass the ball. Jerry Tarkanian has decided to go with strength up front. He's playing Moses Scurry as a starter instead of Barry Young. O'Neal getting his third foul. He and Roberts both have three now for LSU. You know, we talked about Jackson having to have a big game, Keith, a solid 25. And to me, the kid gets 26 in the first half. And it was really a solid performance because his point total has totally exceeded his shot at his shots. Butler at the line with eight points, four out of six from the foul line. Seven point LSU lead, cut now to six by Butler's free throw. Butler's a very quick player. They believe that he can guard people on a perimeter as well as on the inside with his tremendous quickness. Came out of Washington, D.C., went to San Jacinto Junior College, played for Ronnie Arrow down at Texas. Sims picks it up for LSU. Maurice Williams and Chris Jackson backcourt. Sims on the front line with O'Neal and now Singleton in, replacing Robert. Jackson. Oh, it's O'Neal out and Singleton in. Robert stays. Puts it up, missed it. Jackson and Williams had 40 points between them in that first half. Good job defensively in transition. That was one of the keys for LSU. Get back defensively. They gave the break. Larry Johnson came out storming for UNLV, but the zone shut him down. Well, they'd like to see him out in the perimeter, even though he has a pretty good shot from out there, as you can see. Just hit the three-pointer. Now it is a three-point ball game. LSU leading and ball. 18.36 to go, and it's 58. Tigers, 55, Rebels. Jumps out six nothing to start the second half of play, and now it's a three-point ball game. There are some of the NBA scores, other games being played in advance of the big one over in New Orleans. Duke gets by Georgia Tech by two. I'll the tell you, ACC. Mike Shashevsky does an amazing job year in and year out. They play great team defense. Bob Hurley's become an outstanding point guard. Kenny Anderson, though, is the best freshman in America. Vegas outscore him six zip. Big, big run by Vegas because I'll tell you something, if LSU came out with a hot run here to start this half like they finished, we could have had maybe, maybe a blow up. But Vegas back right in the hunt. Chris Jackson brings it up. Look at that screen by Sims. You gotta fight to get over the top of those screens. Drops it off inside to O'Neal. This shot is short. Robert Green has it. I'll tell you, it's amazing when the both of them hang around the basket like that. You had the bad shot by O'Neal Roberts. Oh, Indiana up 17 on Minnesota. Minnesota just can't play on the road, though. That's an incredible story, isn't it? Well, I think, isn't that game at Minnesota? Is that in Indiana? It? I think I it's not. I think it's at Minnesota. I do. That's wrong. That score is wrong. I gave us bad information. Yeah, that score is wrong. 
Yeah, it's Minnesota at home winning by 17. Yeah, they're tough in the barn. They got an outstanding player, Melvin Newbern, a tremendous defensive player. And they they don't play on the road. They have a tough time for the Haskins team winning on the road. You're right, Keith. And to be a great team, you got to be able to win some on the road. Oh, nice pass. Scurry inside. The but Johnson created that for Scurry. He made the quick drive to the goal. There's the right score. Minnesota up 17 on the Young Hoosiers. Nobody back. Hunt missed it. Rebound, Scurry. Little Look slow the down for Moses. A little slow getting back defensively. Moses Scurry's done a solid job getting the start here in the second half. We're having some power trouble along the court side here for the moment. Rolls off the back iron. Rebound, Sims. Don't go down. Sims hanging around the basket. Lit on it. Long pass ahead. Inside Spurry, blocked out of there and comes back out to Hunt. And they're asking for goaltending, don't get it. Johnson misses and rebound to Robert. Here's where he likes to go in showtime right now. Little change of direction, get it back to him. Jackson. Johnson the rebound, long pass. Jackson knocks it out of bounds. When Jackson takes the ball to the goalkeeper, looks to shoot, Williamson's going to have to rotate back defensively and give him some ballast. Sitting right behind Jerry, his wife Lois Parkadian, as we look at Dale Brown. There's his wife right behind him, her head down, on the left. Anthony and Hunt outside. Johnson playing outside, leaving Spurry inside, along with Butler. That's Butler. Got it. The front court has really has really come out in the second half and give a solid performance. When you rate the top front courts in America, I'd go with Stacey Ogden and Johnson and Butler as the best in the nation. The Rebels are back on top, 61 to 60. Not a good shot right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Foul. Stanley wrote with the ball. Larry Johnson says no Stanley. Stanley told us to tell all his students back there at Golden Ring School where he's an administrator to do some studying as Dale Brown doing some teaching. Johnson now has three personal fouls. At the line, shooting two. Williamson was so highly acclaimed out of high school. Laid out in New Haven, Connecticut. River Force High School. You know, I mentioned Norm Sloan and about coaches. Florida came in yesterday, a lot of problems. Dwayne Shinsis, you and I were talking about it. I hate to see careers end like Norman Sloan's. Shelby Metcalf, 27 years, let go in the middle of the season. It's really sad to see guys who put so much time and so much into their career end like that. All knocked out of bounds by LSU. The Tigers back to a one-point lead now as Singleton goes out and Sims comes back for the Bengals. Inside, Scurry, nice move. Ball checked away and gets it back and rolls out again. And this time, the Tigers will get it. Scurry's a very emotional player, Keith. He really plays with a lot of emotion, a lot of enthusiasm. He's a foul, crowd favorite down in Vegas. See, right now, let's take a look at the defense. Anthony's playing head-to-head -head on Jackson, and they're zoning. Johnson with a strong rebound. Ball picked up by Butler. LSU a little bit slow getting back defensively now. That's how they attack the zone. Butler, block by O'Neal. Butler takes it at Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille says, no, I already have the record in the SEC. And block shots. Don't you know that, Mr. Butler? I blocked 10 in one game. There he goes. Look at Shaquille. He goes up. What a body. He was... Just awesome when he had him in a McDonald's All-American game last year. 15 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Inside Butler. See, he didn't get a hand up that time on Butler at all. Johnson gets the wicket take. Scurry got it. What a big half. What a big half on a Moses Scurry. Good coaching move by Jerry Tarkanian to go with some strength on the inside. And Moses got 10 now. Yeah, he really played a strong second half. And they're going right at LSU's big people with three fouls. Jackson, no. The reverse dunk, he's going to wave it off on the cylinder. Dick Papara says no. Good call. The ball was up by the cylinder. But the officials out of the ACC, Rich Paparo, Larry Rose, and Stan Roach. And they're burning rubber today, keeping up with this crowd. Well, Paparo's worked five times in the final four. 
Jr. to chase a John Wooden soon. Oh, the lob. Oh. The diagonal pass set that lob up. Nobody threw that pass better than Sherman Douglas, who's playing brilliantly for the Miami Heat. He's to flip it off to Derek Coleman. A big win for Syracuse yesterday over Georgetown. There's the diagonal pass. Flip it up over the top. Catches the defense, goes right behind Singleton Butler. Good performance yesterday. Syracuse finally settling, going with a point guard, playing Billy Owens, where he belongs at the small forward. And Billy has the big game against the Hoyers. Singleton, second personal foul. 66-62 now, UNLV leads it, and they're on a 17-4 run. Well, Jackson hasn't scored here in a half after 26 in the first half. For five minutes and nine seconds, he hasn't had a douche yet, Kate. They've done a good job. Look at Anthony. Chase him. He doesn't want to get the ball. Anthony's really been on him hard. He's chasing him. You see, they're zoning. The other four people are zoning. Ball turned over by the Tigers. Sometimes people play special. Anthony misses the slam. Oh, wow. Rebound is way outside. Something will happen right here. Something will happen right here. Oh. Greg Anthony's uh, slam attempt blew up in his face. Singleton, a very active player. They're starting to get into some gaps on his 2-3 zone. There's a big gap right in the middle behind the front two that play on the... 66-64, Rebels make it a four-point lead now. It's not hit 20. They're starting to recognize the gaps in the seams in the zone. You know, Edison Hunt now has scored 16 points in the ball game. Chris Jackson has 20. He leans so well. He is going to be a sensational NBA player. 24 second clock. Can't it's check him on a run. Butler hits one. Jackson has 28. David Butler on the interior. Good catch down in the box. Turn around, Jay. Air ball there. Roberts pushed him, that's four personal fouls on Stanley Roberts, and now one of the towers has got to go sit down. See, I really believe the problem facing Stanley Roberts has a lot to do with fatigue and conditioning, and that's why he picks up a lot of really silly fouls. Well, Vegas came out real strong. In the Big West, they have one loss, lost to Neil McCarthy's New Mexico State team that features a host of kids from out of Chicago, the Windy City. Butler again. David Butler playing well. Scurry playing well. And Johnson. And Butler's got 16 now. Well, he's an NBA player, Keith. He's got quickness, size, range. See, here's the key now. They're playing a zone, and they're playing man-to-man -man on Jackson. Trying to keep the ball out of his hands. There's inside-outside. Missed it. Rebound, Sim. Good play by Sim. Good role player. Hangs around the basket. Uses his body, his touch. Kisses the glass. Right now, if they dump it to Scurry, use their inside people. Oh, that's the one. Excellent. Excellent play. Created by Anthony. Finished by Hunt. Hunt. What he did was spot up. He shaped up to an open spot. Penetration by Anthony created that opportunity. The Rebels have run off now to an eight-point lead. Hunt's five out of seven in three-point shooting today. Seems like a diamond in one they're playing. Hunt up at the point. Sam's hit one. Well, other people are going to be open, Keith, because they're playing head-to-head -head on Chris Jackson and the other four are zoned into a diamond. It's been a heck of a basketball game with loads of talent. Eric Johnson playing on the perimeter. That's Anderson Hunt. Missed this time off the back iron and the rebound for LSU. Landed the ball. Gives to Singleton, and Singleton is fouled. Singleton gets fouled out of play. Jackson had the awareness as Dale Brown has gone to a little quicker lineup playing Randy Duvall. He used to start, he lost his starting role. Came out of junior college. He's from right here in the Baton Rouge. Went to the same Juco as a kid by the name of Keith Smart. Mentioned that name to Syracuse, and they know who he is. Second foul on David Butler. 1987, Smart hit the big jumper to beat Syracuse in the national championship. Two. 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 Johnson. Tim Gerkerich, the assistant coach, walking behind him with the sweater on. Used to be the head coach of Pittsburgh. He is one of the real brilliant assistant coaches in America. Two. 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 Two.
76-71. They got to get some consistent play out of Singleton. Trying to cut the rubber lead now to four. He did a solid job as a starter last year, played the center position. Two seconds less than 12 minutes to play in the ball game, and the running Rebels lead it by four. Welcome back. Hello, I'm Cheryl Miller, and with me is Dorothy Johnson, the mother of Larry Johnson for UNLV, and she drove all the way from Dallas to see her son play, and you probably miss not being able to see Larry play on a regular basis. That's right. <laughs> I, I do really do miss it. We were joking about earlier that he was a better football player than a basketball player and actually was the little. Well, to me, he was a better linebacker, and he even played quarterback. He was tall enough to see over to everybody else, but he shot up so fast he sided with basketball, and he stuck with it. Well, I'm glad he stuck with basketball. He's having a fabulous game. Let's go back to you, kid. All right, Joe, thank you very much. He's got the body of a linebacker, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you a quick story about his mom. His mom used to watch him play. He'd be out in the playgrounds at 2, 3 in the morning. There was a playground right next to his house, and she'd be out there, and she'd see the lights on and knew he was safe playing, as she could see from her window. Watch her little boy, Larry. James Jones in the lineup right now for UNLV, along with Barry Young, Greg Anthony, and out in front, Anderson Hunt. Butler's inside, has that rebound, loses, picks it up, loses again, and ball rolling around, and now the bodies are falling, and a jump ball is called, and it'll go to Nevada, Las Vegas. I understand the USGA and uh, Karsten Solheim's Ping Golf Club Company have settled uh, the legal action involving the Square Groove Clubs. It's a very complex, complicated decision. But the point is, if you're uh, in playing and your interest in the game is within the structure of the USGA, don't throw them away. Don't put them on the shelf because they have reached a, a compromise agreement on it. The PGA litigation, however, will continue. They've changed their zone. They're into a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Jackson playing the point. James Jones started earlier this year when David Butler was ineligible. He walked. He put the ball, lifted his pivot foot. That's the second time Greg's done that. Yeah, and he's got away with it once or twice. He's done a good job defensively. If we look at Tarkanian, Anthony playing head-to-head -head on Jackson in this half. Well, he's Jackson right. and Williamson had their 40 points in the first half, as you mentioned. Here in the second half, they've had four so That's far. That's because of that special defense now, which has created a problem for Jackson to get the ball. <laughs> Drop it off inside to the big man O'Neill, and he drops it through, and it's a two-point lead for the running rebel. Nice movement without the ball by Shaquille O'Neal. He knows the opening right behind Jackson. They utilize Jones as a passer. Inside, pass intended for Butler, knocked out of bounds. This is where LSU. LSU's got to take advantage of the fact that right now, I was going to say, well, here comes Johnson back on the floor. Took a little breather. He uh, comes in, zone sits down. Well, after this game, Jerry Tarkini and Steve could dominate the month of February, certainly in their league. A lot of home games. A oh, nice pass. Butler got it. I throw that a zigzag pass. You throw it into the post area, take it from the post area, and zigzag it back to the outside. Butler now with 18 points. He's having a big day. Rebound, Shaquille O'Neal. Got it. Great hands, Keith. When he comes to the ball, quick. He is so effective. He's going to learn the 17 years old. That just it blows him up. Terrifying, isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what is he going to be when he's 21? He's a man. Wow. He'll be a very wealthy guy, a yeah. multi-multi-millionaire. Look at him. Right. Great personality, too. And they'll never let him get on a motorbike, huh? <laughs> four fouls now on O'Neill and four fouls on Roberts and the uh, Twin Towers of LSU are in foul trouble. That's been a problem all year long. Inexperience and how to play post-defense. There's a look at Minnesota blowing out Indiana by 24. Minnesota with a great home court advantage. Their fans really get into it, and a very experienced team that knows how to win at home. You know, everybody watches the Big Ten, and the Big Ten is super. What about Gene Cady and Purdue? They're undefeated. Incredible. Unbelievable. That's Jerry Tarkanian's wife. She's done this on many occasions. Nervous wreck. That's a lot of play in. 
He's a do has her doctorate degree in uh, human behavior. Look at this right here. <laughs> oh, it can't, can't be that tough, Lois. It can't be that tough. <laughs> Ten minutes to go in a ball game. 79-76. LA UNLV leading LSU out of the corner. See, look, look at the wall. Right now, if you watch Jackson, he's standing because of the man-to-man -man defense. Man-to-man -man defense of Anthony playing head-to-head -head in the other four is zoning. That has really taken away the one-on-one -on -one ability of Chris Jackson. Smart move by Jerry Tarkanian. Who normally just plays straight head-to-head -head man to man defense. Johnson's going to get open right behind Jackson. They're going to be able to drive the ball. Anthony misses off the front iron and then commits a foul, trying to pick the ball away from Chris Jackson. Silly foul, but one thing UNLV not following because of the zone setup. Now you watch right now, Anthony will find Jackson and all the other people will zone. See, look at Anthony, he'll wait for Jackson to get up to the midpoint area. You're talking about the Big Ten, uh, that shot by Ramil Robinson yesterday uh, Mich uh, to beat Michigan State at Ann Arbor for Michigan. I tell you, Judd Heath Coach Ball Club is, uh, especially at home, they're going to be tough to drive. Yeah. They beat Indiana at Indiana, too, so it was a good road win. You know, you mentioned Ramil Robinson. He loves the big game, the lights, the spotlight. And I'm afraid I have to say this now, Key, and I love Ramil Robinson, but if I had to pick a point guard now on my All-American team, I have to change. It's got to be Gary Payton. He's had such a consistent, unbelievable year. They got him free. Very tough to get him free in a half-court offense. Jackson has 31 to tie the ball game at 79. Is that zone defense? A skip pass is so effective against the zone. Get it to Jackson, Maurice. Oh, good oh, play. Tipped away, and the Rebels come back the other way. Anthony, oh, O'Neal. It's hot and furious out here. Woke up the crowd. There's some of the fans in the Death Dome. 14,000 of them. There are a few vacant seats. Not many. There's Anderson Hunt. And there's the big fella waiting for him. Oh, close to a goaltender. Very close. Remember, you must get the ball on its upward flight. See, Scurry's now back on the floor. And he was very effective in the first half from the 35. Short by Butler. I smell an LSU spurt. They're starting to open up the court a little bit more. And this is where Jackson usually excels. Late in the game, he wants the rock. Williamson. Nice little spurt. The court is starting to open up a little bit, Keith. And when it opens up, Jackson becomes dynamite, and Williamson has really caught on. This game has been as advertised. The door hiding. Rebound, Spurry. Waiting for a foul. Jerry Tarkanian might need a T.O. to talk to his people. Mice is up to come in for the Rebel. See what they're going to do now. They're going to send Jackson through the defense to try and bump Anthony off the screen. See, Anthony's chasing him, and he's trying to bump him off the screen, moving without the ball. Look, watch him. He's constantly moving without the ball. Williamson got loose. He's wide open deep because of the presence of Jackson. a foul on the ball could very well have been a foul on Roberts. 85-79 LSU by six. You can almost sense the spurt coming because of the way the floor was beginning to open up. That is a concern. Jerry Tarkanian by the Flanagan to the towel. Can you imagine that? 59 years old this game does be two towels? Two towels? We don't do that in broadcasting, Keith. Bill Shoemaker, the horse racing legend, rides the final mount of his career. You see, we're forming Chase Cooney into the horse business. He's going to yeah. race horses. <laughs> race horses. Race horses. What a joke that fight was. Gerald Cooney. Unbelievable. Travis Pye stays in. He's outside with Anderson Hunt. Has the ball. Good three-point shooter. David Butler was open. Pass inside instead to Larry Johnson. And Johnson, sealed off on the baseline, will turn it over. 
He drew a crowd. He flashed to the basketball. He drew a crowd down there on the baseline. Oh, no, a little vice now has got the challenge of Chuck and Jackson. Six-point lead for LSU. Now he's going to go through the defense, try to run him off a screen. Vice is chasing him all over. The ball way outside. And Butler beats O'Neal on the backboard. I don't think you wanted that shot in that sequence right nope. there. So when you have options like Williamson on the floor, that's Larry Johnson missing. He pulled up short on that shot. He didn't follow through. He knows it. See him coming down the court. He's working his hand. I think what he anticipated, if you look at the foul trouble right now, Johnson the three, LSU, Robertson only a four. That's been the story of their year. Both big guys getting in foul trouble. Jackson out of the corner. No, rebound O'Neal. Oh, what a great move that was, Keith. From the weak side, the offensive rebound and a power move. And then he gets the big hug and the squeeze. And there's a lot to hug. Butler got the third foul, so he and Johnson now have three, and O'Neal going to the line with a three-point opportunity, 87-79. There's Jackson, and there's O'Neal, a diaper dandy, a young baby, as you would call him, Keith, going up super strong. What a class of freshmen right now. You talked about certainly Kenny Anderson, Shaquille O'Neal. Give that a name of Brian Hensley, University of California is a great one. The freshman, his dad was George Hendrick, the place where Luke Campanelli having a great year. You were talking about Gary Payton a while ago. UCLA beat him by 14 points to the high Oregon State for the Pac-10 lead yesterday. They got a tremendous tandem in the corners in McLean and certainly Trevor Wilson. Anderson Hunt for three. Anderson having a good, solid year. Spots up into the opening, shoots for three. Now watch when Jackson is coming off the screen. But give it up. Sam. Oh, he played with the ball. No good. Got to wave it off. Can't hit the field on a cylinder. You can do that in international basketball. O'Neal laughing about it on his way down the court. His coach is Dale. Looking for a drink of water. There's the jumper. Dale blamed himself a little bit earlier. He's playing with the ball up on the rim. He blamed himself, said he was too passive with this team. And now has to get on him a little bit more. Vice. No. Johnson the rebound. Great hand. Ah, that's block goal pending. Got it. Good ball by the trail official, Larry Rose. Great hands. Now a four-point ball game, LSU 88-84. This is the time of the game where this guy usually excels with the rock. Shooting 90% on the free throw line, Keith. And you know how valuable that is in the winning time crunch time. Sims feeds low to O'Neal. Good. With that quick release down in the box. Looks like he's shooting down. Well, he is. Seven-footer, he's jumping about two feet. That's a good rebound by David Butler. He's had a big ball game. That's a big rebound, too. Big possession. They need to score on it. What a play. What a play by Butler. He makes the great rebound, and then he converts it. We got a dandy of a game. He's got 20 points, David does. I'll tell you, that football game's going to have to go big time, Tex. I'll do this showtime. I'm only kidding. That football game's going to be a great one until Montana and Elway. Who do you like? None of your business. Oh, come on now. You know you're a big <laughs> football expert. you got to tell me now. Who do you like? I like them all. You like them all. <laughs> You'd be a politician. Well, I'm going to tell you. It's Montana going away easy. Elway has no shot. All I know is this, that uh, the heavy favorites oftentimes don't win in all these benefits. The jumper, not the guy you think would shoot the ball. But he says that's what he recruited me for my long range day. Seven point lead for LSU. 440 to play in the game. Inside to go to Spurry. Steal it away from Mosey. Put the ball on a hand run. Nice Williamson. Uh, 
with the excellent pass to Maurice. Williamson converts, finalizes, gets the deuce, and he hit the big, long area coach jump. Look at his wacko. Look at him go bananas. He's having a ball. He loves it. I love that enthusiasm. Great job, Dale Brown. From one wacko to another wacko. <laughs> Next week, Louisville at Ohio State or Arkansas at Texas, depending on what area of the country you're watching, and then Indiana and Illinois from Champaign. Both teams are struggling just a bit. But the Big Ten race, very much alive. And remember, they don't have a postseason tournament for the Big Ten. Well, Illinois hanging in. They need that win tomorrow over Iowa with the block shot. Margo Hook, Iowa, beautiful place. Never easy. Non-call there and a good non-call. Yeah, good, good non-call by Dick Paparo. Well, see, now they come back straight man to man. This Williams set against Hunt. Jackson picks Anthony. It peeled him right off on the pick. Yeah, see, man to man right now is good. Jackson should have a field. O'Neal well, missed trying to come back over his head. That's a little fancy. And the Rebels come away with it. 95-86, nine-point lead, LSU, and a foul. Good, the ball. And Rose called it, yeah, Larry Rose called it jump ball. Great course right behind him. Outstanding assistant coach. There's Jerry Torcadia wanted the foul. Thought he had some arm. See, right now they got to put the ball in the hands of Jackson. It's straight man-to-man. -man. There isn't a college player alive that can handle a one-on-one in a man-to-man -man situation. Inside, you got a foul on David Butler trying to hide handles for Keel O'Neal. And I'll tell you what, David's got to be getting a little tired. He's got four fouls. He's been squared up against that big guy all day. And O'Neal at 17 probably has absolutely unlimited energy. These guys at Harvard initials in there here. I can't do that. I tried. It doesn't work. Well, Mark Gary wants out. time out here. Well, too late. Can't get it. See, they're going to get it to Jackson right now because he'll get fouled. He's a great free throw shooter. Bad pass for him. Hunt on a break. Give it up. Give it up. And a foul. He now with one Williamson. Dick Paparo nails Maurice Williamson with the foul. Anthony sort of bristled up here. He doesn't like it. See, the reason I'm talking about putting the ball in the hands of Jackson Key, they have to learn how to play with the clock, these young kids. 317, you're up nine. You got one of the premier free throw shooters in America. He's a great, great guard. They're going to get the ball in his hands. All right, there's the missed dunk. Right here, he takes off. He gets Lauren. It's Brick City, USA. He can't believe it. And then Williamson comes up with a rebound, and then they call the foul a little bit later. Yeah, but you know, he's given up about 88 pounds. He's given up a few pounds. He weighs 200, and uh, O'Neal weighs 286, 288, somewhere in that neck of the woods, depending on what he had for breakfast. I think O'Neal's got to come down to about 270. Get even a little bit quicker. Let's 95. 86, still a nine-point lead at 317 to play, and the free throw is good by Anthony. 11.30 left in that ball game, and Minnesota blowing away Bobby Knight's babies. Well, his young baby's really having a tough time on a road. It's a whole different world than playing a Bloomington, Indiana. They're young, but they're going to be a good basketball team in the future. We'll be back with more after this message and the word from our ABC station. 87, LSU leading UNLV. The losses by the Rebels this year have been to Kansas, Oklahoma, and at New Mexico State by a point. LSU's losses this year have been Kansas here. They lost at Mississippi State. They lost at Alabama, and they kind of helped Georgia as the Bulldogs beat them here at Maravich Assembly Center. You know, these two schools are hooked up in a war on recruiting also, Keith, for Ed O'Bannon from down at Artesia High School in Lakewood, California. He has said that LSU and Vegas are two of his choices, along with Syracuse, possibly, UCLA, Arizona State, Southern Cal. That's a pretty good selection. <laughs> Not bad. He's like a catalog. He's a great player. The seven-point lead for LSU. Big possession right now defensively. Vegas has got to come up with a stop. James Jones out in front. O'Neal misses once. It's blocked out of there by Butler. Great play, David. Oh, great fly by Butler. But Jackson gets fouled on a play. And if that, if you're Dale Brown, that's the guy you want in that free throw line. Look at him. 90.2 on the free throw. I think Chris got an elbow on the top of the head. 
<laughs> he's really a nice kid, Keith. He's really a real warm kid. As everybody knows, he has he has that Tourette syndrome, a nervous, uh, uh, I guess you would call it a nervous disorder, basically. And he does a great job now as a spokesman for them, really working. His medications got it under control. Bailey's all good. That's an eight-point lead now, and time certainly the ally of LSU at two minutes and 53 seconds to play in the game. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. You put the ball in his hands, let them have to follow him, or he'll make something happen, and he's like automatic on a free-throw line. Hunt way outside. Won't get it. Rebound goes to the big man, O'Neal. He's, he's got Roberts back in the game as well. He's made himself... Johnson, not a good pass player. Johnson, and he's fouled, and Roberts is gone. Roberts is going to really have to work on positioning, and that will all come with a little bit more quickness, which will happen. Stanley, get away from the table, baby. He fouls out with eight points. He's a lovable kid, Bill says. Just a beautiful young guy. His high school coach, Jim Childers, is here working on the LSU staff. Came out of South Carolina, player of the year in high school. Larry Johnson's been quiet really in the second half. They've done a good job with the zone, forcing him more to the wing and to the perimeter. Where the man-to-man -man early in the game, he was dominating the game. The ball comes in to replace him. Moses Curry comes back, and Butler is going to get a little rest. the score. LSU's got a great recruit in the house today. I met him in the lot, in the locker room and then in Dale's office. Antonio Lang, his choice is Keith. I know you like this because you love academics. Duke, North Carolina, Georgetown, LSU, and I spoke to his dad and he told me, my son's not a 4.0, Mr. Vital. He's a 4.36 on a 4.0 scale because of advanced placement courses. He's just on top of the ladder and he's from Mobile, Alabama. Hey, where's Alabama? They're not in that uh, hunt with Sanderson. He mentioned the schools to me. He mentioned Duke, Carolina, Georgetown, LSU. I don't know. <laughs> we had a great game here so far. It's an eight-point game. It certainly could swing with the explosiveness of a team like Vegas. But right now, LSU should be in total command, especially with the presence of a player like Jackson who excels at the free throw line. Well, LSU's got a, a, some tough games on the road. You look now, they've had some of their, their tough games here at home. they got to go play o, at Ole Miss. Then they've got a runner with uh, Loyola Marymount. Then they got Mississippi State and Auburn here. But then they got to go Tennessee, Kentucky, Vanderbilt all on the road in succession. That probably will tell you how they will wind up doing in the country. Well, Ricky Patino's done an amazing job creating so much excitement at Kentucky. He and Gary Williams, their personalities are so contagious to building a program, and in two years, Kentucky will be awesome. They got a verbal commitment recently from an outstanding big kid from out of Florida, Miami, Jamel Mart Martinez, 6'11". In this ball game with 2.34 to go, it's 97-89. LSU and Larry Johnson goes back to the free throw line. I want to know who's the schedule maker, though, down here at LSU, because if I'm Alabama, as we look right here, fouls to give, and out left, you can read it all. There's the conversion. Playing Alabama the next day after playing more Notre Dame, and then on top of it, traveling to play Alabama? They had a great performance against Diggers Fighting Irish. And they got blown out by Alabama. All knocked out of bounds by Greg Anthony. Tonight, we invite you to stay with ABC for some special entertainment starting with Life Goes On. Then Bruce Boxleitner hosts the all-new Love with a Twist, followed by William Shatner, Leonard Nemo, and Christopher Lord. It's Star Trek Three. ABC Sunday night movie. Get the open man. they got to think what trifecta now. They need three threes. They're one point from 100. 99-90 LSU. Johnson gives it away to Scurry, who brings it back for Anderson Hunt. Three. There's one of them. He answers with one. Two minutes to go in a ball game. Jones after DeVal on the corner. They try to trap him, but they get it out of there. Oh, what a quick miss by Jackson. Wow. Chris Real Jackson. Ball. the shot. I guess normally that shot will fall for Jackson, but you're up at that time. Oh, there's Johnson with the strong move to the goal. 
Biscuit. You only take a layup. With this lead, you only take a layup. Rebel steal it. Anthony with the quick hands. Cut. Won't go down. And Sims rebounds it and throws it away. 124, 101, 95. Six points for LSU, but the Tigers just turned it over. Gail Brown's got to really be upset with the way they are playing late in the game. Right now, they don't have a rhythm to running out the clock or getting the high percentage shot. And that could be the youth, the inexperience of this basketball team, but he has to be concerned. This game is not over, Keith. Nope. Now with Anderson Hunt on a floor to knock down the three or Johnson. Inside, they take it. Now back outside to Greg Anthony. No. Rebound. Williamson has it. They don't need points. They got to bat the ball out. Has a foul called, I think, on Anderson Hunt. Really not playing smart basketball right now with the lead. Hunt with three. Butler's the only Rebel with four. Robert just fouled out for LSU, and O'Neill's been playing a long time. And now the ball will go to the line. And other than Jackson, they've really struggled on the free throw line against Georgia when they lost that game to Georgia in overtime. They missed 10 one and ones in the last seven minutes in a row. There's a big one and one right now. This could really make it easy for them. Missed it. Big possession. Butler, another rebound. Larry Johnson. Moses Curry. I thought maybe he looked at his pivot court. They got a foul underneath, and it's one against the Rebels. LSU really making it tough for itself down the stretch. Chris Jackson really trying to be a leader on the floor, running up the players, doing some communicating, talking. Butler just fouled out. Butler really active on the inside. Remember, they're playing without Stacey Ortman. Suspended for one game. They're not paying some incidental. They got two more games uh, in which they got to suspend two players, too. We want to point out to the people what happened. A number of UNLV players in an audit done by the university for the NCAA. They found that some of the players didn't pay phone bills or didn't pay for some incidental purchases and snacks. They paid them later, but did not pay at the time they departed from the hotel, and the NCAA has issued a one-game suspension. I feel, as I said earlier, the penalty is too severe. It gets paid to till. LSU again missing free throws in clutch time, 101-95. Inside, Anthony gets it up and in. Great move by Anthony. There's the quick timeout. Remember, we're looking at a four-point game, and we're looking again at the free-throw line. Could this be deja vu again of the Georgia game? Where they blew a big lead late? That's a nice move. Hang time. Greg Anthony, the entrepreneur. He's an outstanding young businessman. Worked in Washington, D.C. Very bright. Beautiful move. His poetry in motion. Hanging in the air. He's twisting. He's turning. He's hanging. He flips it up with the left hand and he converts it. He is left-handed. Lucky Jackson, nothing like shooting free throws. If you make free throws, you make life easy for your coach. This is the fifth game between these two teams. And each time the home team has won, and based on what we see in front of us on most numbers, the likelihood is the home team is going to win again. Last year it was a classic finish. Ricky Blanton hit one at the buzzer, an unbelievable jump shot to spark uh, LSU to that big win. Blanton now with the Phoenix Suns. I think that's the kind of guy that Dale needs to find, too, is a Ricky Blanton kind of guy who will just take the whole team to the stack and fiddle and shake it once in a while. Well, you're not going to find the Blantons that easily. But again, right now, the strategy gets down. You can talk all you want in a timeout about what to do with the ball. It's going to get down to making free throws. If you make your free throws, you go home with the victory easily. If you don't, you give life to Vegas and give them an opportunity with their great athletes to get a chance to win the basketball game. Hey, a win here by Vegas today, if they can pull this out, they can really rise in the polls with the Georgetowns getting beat, Louisville getting beat by the ball. Well, they came in fifth. They could uh, go as high as three if they should win. 
right now they trail. And there's a bad pass. Turnover. Out of control. Again to Larry Jackson. They got to get a timeout. They got to get a timeout and set up an offensive set. They don't have any more timeouts. Hold it right Las Vegas is out of timeout. No, not Vegas. I mean LSU. LSU has one left. I one left. Yeah, LSU has one left. Yeah, Vegas, you're right, Keith, does not have any more, but LSU has won. Neil Brown, five seconds. Neil Brown's team is really having a disaster at the end of the game. Well, as free throws, again, go back to it. They've been up there three times now, and three successive times. They've failed to convert a one-on-one. -on -one. And I hate to keep mentioning it, but it happened against Georgia. Ten consecutive one-on-ones. And it's Duvall up here now. He missed the last time he was up there. And you know he's got to feel some pressure right now and a little tightness. One plus one. He's normally a good shooter, too. Oh, and does he take a deep breath? He's from out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He went to Garden City West out of Kansas City Junior College. I believe it's in Kansas. I don't know exactly the city, Keith, but I do know that Keith Smart played there as well. An outstanding coach and Jim Carrey who coached up Smart went on to Indiana fame. Dave Burns and our statistician. Big one. Thank you, David. Big free throw here. Made them both. Gives them a four-point lead. Now with your Vegas, you've got to get that quick score. It doesn't necessarily have to be a three. Oh, Anthony lost the ball and a whistle and a foul. Andy Duvall hits the two big ones. Jerry Scrub showed a lot of guts trying to get back. He uh, makes these two, it's history. Well, if he makes one, it may be. If he doesn't make any, it still could be. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Only 20 seconds. It's a four-point lead, very tough, unless they do something totally silly. Look at Chris Jackson waving a one to the crowd. CJ! This first half performance is one of the great performances I've seen for a half, Jackson. There's Williamson. He's learning. There's Clark. Chewing the towel. Chew that baby, Jerry. Come on now. Like a candy bar. 104-99. The depth goal is starting to rock. Look at Williamson. 25 points today. Shooting 9 for 18. His dad, Big John, has got to be happy. For the player with the Nets. Vice, no. Rebound, Hunt. Both of them have 100 now. 105, 102, five, six seconds. He's automatic. Well, I'll tell you what. Stranger things can happen, Keith. If he misses these, they have a shot. But I'll tell you what. Don't bank on this 90% shooter missing him, and he knows it. The Clark Anthony, knows it. Uh, Anthony fouls out on that play. Jerry, when they get their entire team, look at this guy talking to us here, Maurice Williamson. <laughs> He's yelling, we're number one. Look at Maurice. Not yet. But not yet. I'll tell you one thing, though. Both these clubs can be heard from big time at postseason time. If Jerry can get his team for a long run after this latest episode and get his team together, I believe they got the potential to win it. I really do, Keith. But it's been a struggle all year long because they haven't had their team out of the gate all year. He's automatic. He's automatic. They're waving everybody. Look, look, look at them. Look at them. Look at them. He's waving everybody away at traffic cop. No fouls. Look at Officer Brown. No fouls. So there, relax. Hands in your pocket. It's over, Dale. Relax. Get in the car and head to New Orleans and watch the Super Bowl, Dale. It's his screen. I hit one. What a great game. What a great game. by Anderson Hunt to make it LSU 107, University of Nevada, Las Vegas 105. You think they can top this? Elway in Montana. They're in a locker room right now. <laughs> They're probably watching us in the locker room. I'll tell you one thing. This has been one exciting college basketball game. And as a look at the winner, Dale Brown. UNLV goes to 14 and 4. LSU goes to 14 and 4. And that'll do it. A two-point win for LSU 107-105. Keith Jackson, Dick Latow, Cheryl Miller. We hope you enjoyed ABC's college basketball.